Yeah, my, my name is Phil Simons. I'm the president of the um, Pine Rivers and Sandgate branch, uh, RAF Association, Queensland Division. Um, I've been president for the last three years. Our branch is situated at Three Old Road, Marumba Downs. We have headquarters there. At the moment we have um, about 42 full members and about 16 social. Today we're at um, Spitfire Avenue which was the old A2 strip for World War II where 548 and 549 Squadron uh, were based in this area. It was probably this strip that the um, two pilots, um, Sergeant Chandler and um, Squadron Leader William Wright took off from on that fateful morning, uh, 19th of um, April 1944. The two pilots took off around about 8.30, just prior to 8.30 a.m. in the morning for a trial run. Um, the uh, squadron leader Wright, he was testing his aircraft out after engineers had, had checked it over. And um, uh, Sergeant Chandler, another pilot from 548 Squadron, uh, collided with um, uh, squadron leader uh, Wright over Young's Crossing. and. Um, uh, both pilots died in that um, collision. The two pilots who died in the crash were um, Squadron Leader William Wright, who uh, come from Scotland, and um, uh, Sergeant Chandler, who come from England, uh, were both RAF Spitfire 5 for 8 squadron members. Every year, um, the our branch, uh, the then Pine Rivers uh, branch, um, in cooperation with the then Pine River Shire Council, um, headed by uh, Mr. Devon Chapman, and our councillor for Division 7, David Dwyer, Councillor David Dwyer, um, put a lot of time and effort into uh, finding out what actually happened um, and organised the original memorial stone at uh, Young's Crossing. Next year we have the 75th anniversary of the death of the two pilots. Um, the, the death of these two pilots which we um, hold a memorial so service for uh, every year. The 75th anniversary next year is going to be on the 27th of April, namely because uh, the 19th of April is Good Friday, and of course nobody will be around then. And uh, we anticipate that working in with uh, two days after Anzac Day, we should get some recognition, and hopefully the community will uh, be involved with us, um, and the schools will be involved with us on this um, uh, solemn day. Normally in events like this we would invite the head of government um, and the head of the uh, RAAF to attend um, to highlight the importance of the day. We are organising at the moment the two, um, two relatives of Sergeant Chandler who live in England uh, to attend the uh, meeting. That will be our international guest and um, organising I think it's a great grandniece of um, Squadron Leader Wright, who is residing in uh, Sydney, and um, organising to get them to attend, and uh, whoever is left now of the um, uh, Spitfire Association in uh, Australia to attend. My name's David DeWire. I was a councillor on Moreton Bay and Pine River Shire Council for 22 years. Part of that I was on the board of North Pine Country Park and I was trying to improve visitation there. Uh, speaking with a group that did the model trains, I thought if we could use Merview at Reserve as a car park and run a, run a model train up there. So I requested the surveyors to survey a path to put this train. And when they did, I walked the course and they just deviated from where I thought it should have gone. And I said, why? And they said, oh, there was a Spitfire crash there in 1944. 
So as a result of that, some of the locals got to hear about that and created a few issues. So we had a public meeting where we got all the seniors that were around the area in the, the 1940s on where they thought this plane crashed. And people's memories varied over that period of time. But we come up with the existing location in Merview at Reserve. Although that divot was irrelevant, um, I actually spoke to the doctor that pronounced Chandler dead. And he, in those days, they had steel toe cap boots on, had to take them off to crawl into the plane. What it had done, it had actually landed, taxied along Merview at Reserve, and there was a tree trunk lying on the ground it hit that and catapulted over and that's how he died and as a result of that so speaking to different people and we got the 548 549 squadron which was based in Sydney at that particular time and I spoke with quite a number of the members of the 548 549 fighter squadron can't remember the years but we actually had our first dedication ceremony up there and the Rotary Club of Pine Rivers with um, Kenny Young we got a massive rock and we placed that at the site and another local resident um, forget his name but he supplied some wire from the fuselage and we actually melted that onto the rock but because the rock was cold and this substance was hot it just clouded over so you couldn't actually see the wire in there I believe the Morton Bay Regional Council still has that wire from the fuselage that was there all the students in the area at the time they used to go out there on a regular basis diving and looking for parts of planes and anything like that because that whole area was a base camp for training for Americans and Australians during the Second World War. Wright Reserve was named before I got on council but once I got the history I wanted to name it Chandler Reserve and I thought that was appropriate that that was the other side of the creek there so those two pilots came from UK, flew together, died together buried together at Lutwich and they got parks named after each other at the time. While they certainly are in desperate need for, for donations, they do get some funds from Morton Bay Regional Council. They do get some funds for various parts of projects from the state government, from the gaming fund, but that's only a small source covering a wide group of volunteer groups. A lot of local funding is required, so if there's any businesses out there that appreciate maybe their parents, grandparents or something were in the RAF and it would be really, really good if they could support this, this deal that um, is to remember their forefathers but remember the, that day back in 1944 on the 19th of April. Okay, I'm Brent Ledes, Secretary of the Pine Rivers and Sandgate Branch of the RAFA. My involvement started right here, in fact, when David Dwyer was uh, preparing to make a pathway up to the uh, Hyde Park village. And uh, they came across a, a few morsels around the place, and it turned out uh, David did some research and found that the, uh, one, of the crash, one of the planes had crashed here, one of the Spitfire planes. He rang me up at school one day and he asked, he said, oh, Brent, he said, have you got a, a relation called W.H. Ledez? And I said, yes, that's my dad, Billy Ledez. And he said, well, we've found something. We'd like you to join a reunion that's coming up soon. Uh, the connection with David, of course, is because I taught his four kids at one time or another. So uh, we did that. We came down here in a bus, or in buses, and the, uh, David got in the bus when we left and he said, Brent, sit in the front seat. I sat in the front seat. Anyway, the, the, all the fellas from the 548-549 hopped on the bus. And uh, he said, anyone know if anyone got to leave while they were here at Strathpine? 
And uh, yeah, one bloke, I think it was old Ted, Ted O'Hara said yes. He said, uh, Billy Ledez, his son was born while he was here. And David pointed across at me and said, well, this is the son. And so ever since I've been involved in this particular commemoration and the service, and uh, really, uh, it's all for my dad. So I'm very happy with it. There are still some survivors too, Ted Dahara and uh, Jack and Asta, Georgie Armstrong and Freddie Hicks are still around, but they can't all join us these days. Hello, uh, my name is Neil Hansley. I'm a 20 year member of uh, my local IAAF association. I served in the Air Force for 16 years, the permanent Australian Air Force, and the four years in Citizen Air Force where I rose to the rank of pilot officer. The Spitfire has always been of great interest to me because I'm interested in all military aircraft and in civil, and civil aircraft as well, of course. Uh, so that, uh, that, by the way, following that period, I did uh, 28 years as an airworthiness surveyor in civil aviation. I'm now retired, but I'm enjoying my participation in the activities of my local branch here. Everybody knows the Spitfire, a great aircraft, the fighter, the fighter aeroplane that saved England in the Battle of Britain, and those pilots, some of those pilots uh, later in the war when the activity was running down in Europe were assigned to two, two new squadrons, 548 and 549, which came to Australia and worked up with, the, they used to call the process working up, it was a training process of getting experience on the Spitfire uh, for moving to Darwin to form one fighter wing, uh, which is the main group who, along with Australian squadrons, RAF, RAF squadrons, who opposed the Japanese Zeros and the Betty Bombers and did a very fine job. Now the Spitfire, was ide its ideal element was in cold weather. Uh, it was excellent in Europe and England, but when it came to the northern climes of Australia, namely Darwin, where the air is very hot and humid and there's less lift and there's less engine power and there's less control power, the aeroplane was not as good as we had hoped. But because of the skill of the pilots, and the hard work of the engineers who maintained them, those aircraft did a wonderful job and did in fact get many kills against the Japanese. Alongside me here is the recognition to, to Sergeant Chandler, uh, who along with his CO was killed in uh, April 1944 in a mid-air collision, a most, a most sorrowful happening, but that, that's aviation for you. So, uh, my family is, uh, I've got uh, two sons who are both aircraft engineers and a daughter who is a computer whiz and we're all very happy together and I thank uh, these people here for the uh, opportunity to speak to my film audience. So best wishes to you all. Bye bye.